Hello and welcome to All My Art and Soul. I'm Michelle Holden, and as the image says, don't forget to check out and join the Facebook group, which is all a part of this channel. And this week's video is part three of Exploring Layers. Uh, I think last week's was called Exploring Different Layers. I just thought, well, let's just not get so wordy and we're just going to be exploring uh, more layers is what I probably will rename it. Um, the yellow tape is on again. This is an eight by 10 within a nine by 12 Canson mixed media. And I think it's the heavier mixed media paper. And my purpose for this next series of abstract art journal pages is um, exploring the different types of layers, uh, but I'm going to stick with this one palette as it's part of my new series that um, I am not, uh, I'm not videoing right now because I'm leaving that for me to really explore and experiment with. So I'm trying out different ideas and um, right now I'm activating the substrate. There's no gesso on it and I'm just using a regular pencil and I'm thinking more horizontal um, areas, abstract areas. And I am gonna think in odd number um, this particular series is uh, a continuation of where I last left off a long time ago when I was uh, a landscape, when I was painting landscape, and especially Georgian Bay landscapes, and my paintings became more and more abstract. And uh, that those were the paintings that triggered me wanting to go all the way with abstraction. And in a way, I should have called this video coming full circle because all the abstraction, the mixed media, and everything that I've done, at least for this particular series, I'm coming back, but I'm not making it represent representational. At least that's the goal. So this particular page uh, again, which is an 8 by 10 I'm using the colors, and I will leave the list this time in the description. Turquoise Blue by uh, Liquitex, Yellow Ochre, Quinacridone Magenta, Raw Umber, Payne's Gray, Nickel Azo Gold, Titanium White, and Manganese Blue. So there's three different blues here, which um, I love how they... Some are cool, some are warm. Uh, they have different purposes. And I like to use Payne's Gray for the dark. Um, but this particular page turns out very light. And that's the end idea or the picture in my mind, the feeling, because that's what I'm going for in, in my series. Those videos will be coming up when I get further into them and um, just just start knowing, knowing where I'm going. So as you can see, I used pencil, then I used, what is that called again? The wax crayon, of course, and I forget what it's called just because right now I'm doing the voiceover. And then I'm thinking of the feeling and I'm going by memory. So I did use uh, a print of my painting, uh, which, is, which is in storage. My original is uh, 36 by 48. And it's, uh, I just love these colors. And I've always wanted to continue with them in a more abstract way. So I'm really pleased that I'm finally here with new law, knowledge and experiences. So that's the raw umber. Of course, I'm using a, um, a gloss gel uh, to thin out my paints. You can use a matte. And there's so many different kinds of mediums to use now. But I'm trying to remember to use that all the time because um, for, for each layer, 
I'm realizing and have experienced I want thin. I want, uh, I shouldn't say thin, uh, more either transparent or translucent because I want to see or have some evidence of the layer underneath. So we're building and we're building and um, I didn't really, um, I be. I began to let let myself go in this particular on this particular page, but I can see in the next few pages in the same sketchbook uh, that that will happen more and more. And I hope this happens with you as well, as you become more comfortable, and you can start really enjoying play. So I'm my purpose here is dark to light, ending up with lighter layers. So I'm experimenting with the shadowing effect of starting with darks and still seeing the graphite and the drawing elements in it, in the work. And then adding more translucent or transparent lighter layers on top with collage. But for this particular series, I don't want to inundate the piece with collage. Uh, I just want that as a adding to the subtlety of the particular value of, of an area. So I'm thinking my memory, we've been out by in the boat for so long. I have so many, I have thousands of pictures that I've taken. And um, so I'm not, I'm, I tried the turquoise, I'm realizing, wow, that's really opaque. So the, the, the liquid text turquoise blue if you're interested in that, um, it's great, but it's really opaque, so you might really need to thin it down compared to uh, the manganese from Golden. So expensive, this one color, but you know, you've gotta have it. So then of course, bringing out the brayer, bringing other tools that can lift and create uh, more translucency. So I'm thinking of these natural, the, this series is inspired by the natural elements of where I live. And that's the key. But it's the feeling. That's what I'm after. So let's see what happens. So Titan Buff, I forgot to include that in the list. Titan Buff. Uh, that is the Nickel Azo, which is so super transparent. Oh, it is amazing. Um, I am going to treat myself with a new order of golden paints one day soon, but, uh, but I'll have to take a loan. <laughs> anyway, they're amazing. And of course, I love the fluid. I love the fluid paints. Oh, okay, so lifting. And what I'm being cautious here uh, about is if you're using the warm ochres and nickel azo, just like right here, um, when you're going to mix it wet, no, nope. I did not want green. I do not want that color in my painting. It's just, I just, I don't see it out there. There's no green out there. It might be in the water, but these are the colors. The purity of the, the layers on top of them. We're not mixing ochre and manganese because you'll get a green. So you have to wait until those layers are dry underneath so um, they don't mix. So then I just lifted, scraped that off my palette with my razor blade. This is the manganese blue. Um, now these are pure out of the bottle and I'm mixing some together. As you can see, I'm just adding a little Payne's Gray. I'll add some manganese to the Payne's Gray just to change the temperatures of these. Adding black. Well, Payne's Gray is really ultimately um, ultramarine blue and black together. So you can mix your own. And I need to remember that too. So if you're out, that's what you can do. So getting that dryer and just starting to, okay, you know, I remembered I used to have drips all through my paintings. And what I'm trying to do now is what I'm in the middle of experimenting. I'm taking a new course um, and um, finding the marks that I, that, that I relate to, my own personal marks. So I've started some other um, personal art journals that are just more than abstract art journaling. 
it's a lot of work digging down deep, um, finding out what colors you like, marks, what you don't like. And uh, that's been very, very interesting. Um, so here we go. So I'm loving uh, the manganese blue when it is so transparent and beside the Payne's gray, which is very, very, um, it has a lot more um, red in it or purple. So thinking water, thinking the lines that I see in this landscape, and I'm just trying to think of the feeling and meld them together. And I'm not worried, at least this time, this page turns out a little more representational at the end, especially the bottom part, which I show you a close-up of. So stay tuned, uh, watch it to the end, and then I find my awesome collage paper, which is, I think, a manganese that I made uh, with a catalyst wedge, the one with the notches in it that go large to small, and on my jelly plate. So uh, you'll see that at the end. And then remembering when it's um, a thick layer. So now I have transparent and I have thick and I'm drawing through, making lines, but in a different way. So I'm thinking differences, but I'm not overthinking because once you uh, build this repertoire of marks, in your art process, they just come out naturally. And for me, I don't know if I'm just a slow processor, but I take time, you know, I don't care. Everybody's so different. It's taken me a long time to get to this point. And I know some other artists, oh, they just decide to do abstract art and, you know, two, three years, they're, 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 they're doing it. Um, that is awesome. Maybe it's because I was a watercolorist first, learned this, and went down this, I call it the yellow brick road. But, uh, but now we're back. Now we're back. Uh, I clicked my heels three times, and now I'm where I'm at. <laughs> so, loving the collage, and I went through my stack of blue. Realize it's a little thin, and it's so great when you know, okay, I need this color. I need these kinds of marks. And then um, your productivity or your collage papers and everything has a purpose and a clarity because I know uh, that a lot of other artists, for instance, Nicholas Wilton, I'm always shy to mention names during my video, but, you know, I don't know, amazing Clarity is his number one. Then you have Louise Fletcher. Then you have Pamela Coey. And they are my favorite, favorite. <sighs> Judy Woods, must mention her. And, of course, Adele Sipenston. Those are my main artists. Those are all I need. It's probably too many, but I'm narrowing it down to a couple right now. But I but I take what I'm looking for from, from them and apply it to my work in my own way. So that's what you got to be careful of. Yes, we can replicate when we're learning, but I don't believe in saying, oh, look at this. No, if it looks too much like someone else's art, it, it's not yours. You know, at least it's, it's just an exploration. So there's that paper that I found this, uh, so, you know, back, back to the piece. So I'll just, you know, scatter around and talk about different things. That collage, I don't even remember how I made it. I am sure, oh, it's just brush, brayer. I could have dabbed it right on top of my palette when it was left over. You see the middle part is looking too much like, uh, I don't know if you're familiar with this area. 
so it needed to be abstracted. As soon as it's too representational, that's not what I want. It'll be distracting because then people will say, oh, that's that, or oh. So I'm trying to get a feel of Mark's elements intertwined with each other, uh, different sort of, all these different realities together, these different consciousnesses, I guess you want to say. So, yes, that's where my art's going. That's, that's, that's what I'm searching for. Um, and what a journey it has been. So, experimenting with the black and white little pieces. Um, if you've seen, if you have not seen the previous videos, the journey of a painting and the following ones, the set of three, which were all warm with yellow ochre and black and white, those really um, needed or really worked with the black and white. This one, no, because it's a feel. So I'm just placing, I just grabbed a whole bunch of collage just to see, because I wasn't sure. So now I am sure. And I know I want this limited, a limited, well, the palette isn't that limited, but it's different blues, ochres, um, there it is. There's the magic color. And um, keeping the collage of the same colors, but just working with different values within an area and experimenting with subtlety. Oh, and history of layers. So as you know, previously um, in my Of Earth and Sky, so my Of Earth and Sky uh, journal pages, I don't know if I call it the mixed media or abstract journal pages. Go check my videos uh, and I'm starting to categorize my videos. So see if you can find, there's a whole series up to 24 of those. Uh, I would always go horizontally across. And um, so that, I remember that coming up in my, in my uh, intuitive process here. So thick line, thin line, uh, with the same color, as long as it's different, and I realize that needs to be a lot lighter. And there's the quinet. I use just a dot here. Um, it is amazing when you mix ochre, nicolazzo, titan buff, white, even with a little bit of the manganese or turquoise, you get an amazing, I don't even know what to call this color. It's like a peachy, neutral. So I realize, what am I doing? That's way too much. So then I'm adding the nickel azo, starting with a really um, uh, really intense color, putting it down the bottom, too peachy, and when that, when this, particular combination of colors is too peachy it just it just uh, it doesn't work it needs to be super light so that's sort of clashing it's not helping the blue it's just too see how that that didn't work right away because it's not of an equal value so and 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 as I was doing this page I knew that I needed some strong colors underneath, so that didn't matter. It's just, okay, what kind of strong colors? What kind of marks can show? And then this is my, um, I use this a lot in my work, and you've seen it. Uh, yes, it does emulate water. And I, I realize I left a little bit in this painting, or painting, it's not a painting, this journal, uh, abstract art journal page, but I put too much and it's the energy of the sparkling of the water, but I wanna show that in a different way, in a different energy, maybe with different shapes. Uh, I'll stick with my circles, different sizes. So I think I show you the, the, um, the print of the painting that I'm using as a reference here, mostly for color. Oh, look at that, it's so beautiful. My favorite colors. And 
I probably um, didn't change the size enough, knowing, seeing this now, but there's a hole underneath of a reflection and building and the energy of the water overlapping where you then see all of this stuff going on underneath. So it's building up of layers, but still leaving space for the eye, for the viewers, so you can see what was underneath, even if it's just a little smidgen or a strip. And um, that's working there because it's the, I'm not interfering with the composition of this. Not that I'm worried about composition at this time. So I'm thinking uh, in odds, one, two, three, four, five. Yeah, so it ends up being a five, and they're all different size. well, mostly different sizes. So that's what you just want to keep in mind. And that it'll find its own way. You could do threes, fives, sevens. That's, um, that's what I want to focus on anyway. So I notice now I needed more. I needed a dark line. And drips down would have also worked in different layers. That would have been really cool. And then coming on top with horizontal. So vertical, horizontal. So knowing this and just jotting down a few little notes for your next page would be great. And then of course I'm drawing up this layer. Because there's definitely more to come. And how much, you know, uh, knowing that your early layers are just building up of history that most likely will be mostly buried, but that the, the feeling of them will be there, especially if they're a dark value uh, or a textured value. And there it is there. So this one is, uh, I called it F Fiery Spirit. And this is just, that's just a print. It's a big, large painting, and that one happens so fast. It's amazing. And uh, it's for sale. Um, I don't think I have it on my website right now, but I might, I might put it back on because I've been trying to streamline my website into a um, more of the current work that I'm working on. And I know it's not, it's not the greatest right now, so I have to, I have to work on that. And uh, that's coming up in the next little while. So check it out. Um, the links are in the description, in the comment section. I also have these abstract art pages or abstract art journal pages, uh, the ones that I love as prints for, you know, all over print products. Um, check those out too. So here's the China marker. That was the name that I was trying to remember earlier. So just trying to keep with line and trying. I sort of got hung up with, with that water feeling. And I know that it's too representational. But at the end, I fix it. So stay tuned. And don't forget, if you are ever wondering about starting or exploring abstract art, um, taking it up. Uh, in a journal, which I call abstract art journaling, is the best, safest way to do so. Because you don't need to show anybody. Because it's in a book, it's closed, you can, you can if you want. It's just for you. And that's the personal part of the, of the art journal that I loved. And I just sort of coined the phrase, abstract art journaling. And I do believe um, uh, only a few people call that, but that, that's my tag, abstract art journaling. Um, I know I don't own the tag, so don't everybody go all, uh, but, but I don't believe there was a lot of people calling it at that time. So, and I've been doing this for, what, a couple years now. Um, and by the way, I am now over, this video is probably the 101st video. So I've got 100 videos up on my channel for you to peruse through. The early ones are super fast time, 
uh, like um, uh, like a couple of minutes with music, and then I develop that from there. So anyway, back to the abstract art journal page. So I'm putting this layer on, and I'm building the size of this area, and I'm keeping going, and I'll know when to stop just by when it feels right. And notice it is wider than the one below the big space. And you can see you can overlap these spaces until you get them just right. So, oh yeah, I did keep that. I kept the swoosh in there. And I don't know if I, oh, I darkened it up just a touch with the Titan buff. And I just like the feeling or the action, the energy of that particular line. So I wanted to take it out of the collage paper and into some of the rest. But I don't know that bottom part that is now catching your eye. Um, I cover that up and even that out into, um, I gradate it into the section below. So then lightening up, just becoming, just making it more horizontal, taking out uh, the curves a little bit. And I like curves and all these neat lines within uh, an area. So, uh, but as long as the, the values are very similar, so it adds a big conversation and a small conversation. So let's see, I'm just pausing. And now I'm thinking of, I'm sort of moving through the middle stage of this, of this particular piece and or abstract art journal page. And I don't really think of that with these uh, as you are with a painting, but it's, it's good to be aware of which stage you're at. So you can practice that when you're working on larger pieces. When you know where you're at, it helps you to get where you're going. So you can come back if you need to. If you ended up down a, a road that, oh, I really don't like that, then you can bring it. Nothing needs to be, you know, you might want to let it sit for a day or two and then bring it on back to the beginning stage Add by adding more layers, covering, and not caring and letting go, and then, wow, look at that, now we'll go this way. So um, that's really fun. And so I notice under the big collage piece, there's a dark blue sort of curvilinear uh, part that's catching my eye. And at this point, when I was working on this page, um, it has not come to my attention, but that ends up being um, covered up with a Titan buff, white, and a little bit of ochre. So just that orange part. See, so now I'm getting too wrapped up in this, and now it's becoming too realistic. So that, so that changes too. And it's sort of a reflection, but it isn't. It's just a feeling. It's a feeling of um, almost going by memory. In this next series, I've, I've come up with some really neat ideas, so I can't wait to share them with you. So I'm practicing a few techniques and a couple of ideas, and then um, those will be the next series of videos and will become my two five by six foot paintings that are here waiting for me for the summer. I can't wait, finally. This is also for an art show that's coming up, this series that I'm working on. Not this page, but this what I'm, exp what I'm using this page to explore for. And um, I'm liking what's happening so far. <clears throat> okay, so making sure that layer is dry. And I know some other artists, even on their abstract art journal pages, but you don't really need to uh, because it, an art journal is for exploring. 
But if you wanted to, are you worried about losing any layers underneath? Oh, here I go. I'm at the reveal. Oh, so what I did, I covered that blue. I didn't notice it yet. Maybe I do it near the end. Uh, but you'll see in the final image, I'm going to show you a close-up of what I do to the bottom part where there's, it's too realistic with the water. I cover it with collage. And then maybe I'm going to do something now. So now I'm just signing it. And uh, that other previous series was all, I always called it Sky, Rock, and Water. So the new title will be a, a different, but it is nat elements of nature, but in a different way. And I always date it. And if you've enjoyed this video, here is the detail. As you can see, the collage paper on the bottom covered that and just added enough more abstraction. But in the next pages that I explore with, and you can see the blue part, I carry the swoop of the collage. And here is one more close up. So um, I hope you enjoyed Exploring Layers Part 3. Um, I will be continuing this series, and I hope you start abstract art journaling, and I'll see you in the next video.